Hey everyone. So today we are going to talk about three really big stories and we're going to call this a prime news episode. Although, I mean, maybe the way that Nintendo does things with Nintendo direct mini partner showcases, we should maybe call this a prime news mini since it's just three stories, but it's three rather big stories. Some really crazy stuff. Nintendo is doing in terms of helping people fix their Nintendo switches. Uh, some dumb stuff happening with Xenoblade Chronicles three collector's edition oh and by the way um somebody is really really pressing nintendo in a very weird way weird at least unusual maybe is the way to put it to remake a bunch of classic nintendo games including f-zero and there's also some stuff out there about uh so you know dropping some so, some updates on NSO. So I guess we have four stories, but whatever. I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. If you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. I really hope that you do. Uh, we're on our road to 80,000 subscribers. When we hit 80,000 subscribers, we're actually going to begin a new giveaway for a Breath of the Wild uh, Master Sword, an actual Steel Blade Master Sword, a Hylian Shield replica, and a Deku Shield replica. I uh, can't wait to give those away, but you know what? That's not what you're here for. You're here for the news. So let's get right into it with our first story so nintendo is launching a brand new repair service in japan and this service is so amazing i really hope that this is experimental so they bring it to everywhere else because it's super cheap it's sort of like an extended warranty but better in some ways let me actually go straight to the article from go nintendo japanese nintendo switch owners can now subscribe to a new service in japan called wide care by paying 200 yen or about $1 uh, and 50 cents USD a month or 2000 yen, AKA $15 USD annually. Nintendo will fix your Nintendo switch system at no additional cost. And this includes stuff like fall and water damage, which is often not covered by warranties and other incidents that would result in hardware failure. Once you subscribe, you can fix your system six times a year, two times maximum for a main unit replacement. So they have to replace the entire switch unit. You can only do that twice. As long as the damages don't exceed a thousand yen or $740 USD. All right, this is a per year thing. If you exceed that number, then you will pay the excess amount only. Shipping cost is also covered in the service, so shipping's free as well. The website gave us the prices on how much some of the parts cost, just for reference. So to get a brand new CPU will cost 13,200 yen, or roughly $98 USD. To get a brand new LCD screen, they're not looking at the OLED one, just the normal one, is gonna be about 8,800 yen, that's gonna be $65 USD. Other parts, which can, you know, don't include the CPU and LSD. So various wires, buttons, maybe the main board. That's about $4,950 or $36.50 USD. If you need parts for your Joy-Con, joysticks, whatever, buttons, that's going to be about 2,200 yen. That's just for a single Joy-Con or about $16 USD. Kind of gives you an idea of what you have to spend if you exceed that $740 USD mark. Furthermore, for the monthly plan of 200 yen, only those who are still under the manufacturer's warranty period one year after purchase can subscribe to it. So basically you need to get past that initial one year warranty. Otherwise you can subscribe to the yearly plan, which is open to everyone regardless of the warranty. So if you want to do the monthly plan, you got to wait till your warranty ends. If you want to do the yearly plan right away. Nintendo really doesn't care. They probably figure most people that are going to grab the yearly plan that that will obviously extend past the one year warranty period. So this is a really, really cool service, and I, I'm very surprised Nintendo's doing this. Nobody else in the industry seems to offer a repair service like this that is this cheap. And up to six repairs per year, that is an insane value, up to the point that they will literally replace your entire main Switch unit twice per year if they need it. So if you're a child, you drop it, water damage, you can have that happen twice, and they will just replace it. That is crazy and really, really good on Nintendo. I don't know what spurned them to create this service because it is so user friendly. It's hard to fathom that this is a profitable thing for Nintendo, but still, uh, this is incredible value. And I really hope that this comes to other territories. Obviously, you know, if they were going to try an experiment with a new 
repair service like this, they'll start in their home country. But yeah, this is amazing. And if this comes to North America, comes to Europe, comes to China, this would just be absolutely incredible. Uh, so kudos to Nintendo for offering this at all. Totally did not expect this coming out of their shareholders meeting. But hey, this is a really great service and really, really good for customers. So kudos to you, Nintendo. Our next story is, well... <sighs> It's weird. So Nintendo did announce ahead of time that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Collector's Edition would be available to purchase again uh, yesterday on their My Nintendo store online, which is fine. They also didn't actually go out and publicly announce what time it would be at. It was a really random drop. You had to follow people like Wario64 on Twitter or something like that if you really wanted to find out exactly when it was going to be available. And to Nintendo's credit, they said there would be a splash waiting page for you to get in and actually pre-order. And it did sound like a number of fans who really wanted Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, Collector's Edition, whatever they're calling it, actually got their hands on it. So that's really, really good. It ended up working out that a lot of people did. Of course, it still was a limited quantity item. And because of that, scalpers did have a field day. At the time of recording, there were like 285 listings or something like that, or 35, maybe it's 235 listings uh, at the time of recording on eBay, all of them averaging around $300 USD. There are some that are a bit lower at around $220, but then they compensate by giving higher shipping costs. So all of them have confirmed pre-orders. They show the receipts, the emails, etc., And it just goes to show that obviously scalpers are always going to have a field day with anything that's limited quantity. And look, that's their right. I think that this does fall a bit more on Nintendo than the scalpers. And I'm going to say this for one reason and one reason only. I don't really see a reason when Nintendo is the sole provider of this collector's edition that they can't just take as many pre-orders as possible within a set period of time. We talked about in the past how limited run games finds a way to take an entire month of pre-orders for literally a limited run of a game before cutting them off. I don't see a reason why Nintendo couldn't at least give us a week, right? Give us a week to get a pre-order in, and then you can just make as many of those collectible items as needed to fulfill those pre-orders, especially since the collectible items don't even get shipped till later this year. So say someone had to wait till December instead of waiting till September to get those items. Hey, I think a lot of true fans of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 will be more than willing to wait. So this is one of those situations that's sort of self-created by Nintendo just having a limited quantity in the first place instead of not just giving us a, a set period of time of at least a week where you can get in all the orders you want. They did limit it to one order per Nintendo account, but Nintendo accounts are free to make, so that's not going to stop scalpers. I, I just unfortunately hate that companies still do this, knowing how scalping works, especially here in the U.S. I don't really understand when Nintendo's the sole provider why they can't just let as many people order this as possible uh, in a set period like Limited Run does, but, you know, Nintendo continues to make baffling decisions sometimes, even if it would have been really consumer-friendly to just give us a week to pre-order and then cut off pre-orders. But what are you going to do? This is the way it is. And because of that, scalpers are going to have a field day and some of them are going to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars as this becomes the only way to get your hands on it moving forward. Now, this doesn't mean Nintendo won't open up other windows to pre-order this in the future, but the fact that it's random, they're not sharing times, which I know they're, they're not sharing times to, you know, thwart scalping. I just, it, th this is just a mess, to be completely honest. But hey, I'm glad a lot of people were able to get their pre-orders in. Let me know down in the comments if you got your pre-order in or if you even desire this version of the game. So next up, we have a really interesting story. So have you ever wished that you could go to Nintendo's investors meetings and get in the Q&A and ask the president of Nintendo a direct question? Have you ever wished that you could be that person? What would you ask? If you were in that position and you were talking to Shintaro Furukawa himself, the man, the myth, the legend that runs all of Nintendo, what would you ask? Maybe you'd ask about new hardware. I mean, investors already ask about that, so that might be a little bit of a waste of a question. And you're probably going to get a non-answer like investors got back in February, hence why they didn't really ask about it this time because, um, yeah, it was 
a non-answer. I mean, investors did ask. Maybe you want to ask about the increase in raw material spending. Well, I mean, an investor actually already did ask that. And Nintendo gave a lengthy non-answer, explaining they're basically just stockpiling supplies. Okay, fine. What I find interesting, however, is that when a fan got this opportunity, they didn't just ask any old question. That's right. A super hardcore Nintendo fan, as they call themselves, got into Nintendo's shareholder meeting by spending $43,000 to get their hands on 100 shares of Nintendo. Yes, it takes at least 100 shares to be invited to the investors meeting. So once you get 100 shares in Nintendo, now you guys know what it's going to cost. 100 shares in Nintendo will get you into the investors meetings and give you an opportunity to potentially ask a question. Now, this person wasn't actually going to get to ask a question. However, Nintendo this time, as they do once in a while, decided to take on bonus questions, which is not a guarantee. There's a set amount of questions. Usually the biggest investors get their questions in. However, because they took on bonus questions, this fan actually got to ask their question. And what did they ask? Oh, nothing big. No big deal. Shintura Furukawa. Hey, are there any plans for remakes, remasters, or new F-Zero games? How about Bot and Katos? Snowboard kids. That's a pretty fair question. <laughs> I mean, if I'm completely honest and I'm sitting there in front of the president of Nintendo, I, I would probably be like, yeah, man, where's my F Zero? Hey, what's up with Metro Prime 4? I mean, that, that that's probably something I would have mentioned. Like, hey, no one's talking about Metro Prime 4. What the hell's going on with that game? Like, you know, it, it, it's a typical fan question, right? Like, hey, these highly requested games, what's up with that? You know, you could also ask, I know me personally, I probably would have threw the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD in. I would have maybe phrased my question somewhere along the lines of, so uh, we know that you guys have ported a significant amount of the Wii U exclusives uh, over the years to the Nintendo Switch. There are a couple notable omissions, things like Xenoblade Chronicles X, but with a new Xenoblade game coming out, I'm not so sure that that's a priority at the moment. However, I do want to ask you, the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD right now only exist in that HD form on the Wii U, but we've seen other games like Skyward Sword get the HD treatment, Link's Awakening get remade. What's up with that? Why don't we have the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD on Nintendo Switch? You know, typical fan question. Well, there was a typical response, at least from Shintura Furukawa, who responded to this question about F-Zero and such and said, it is realistically difficult to develop new titles and remakes, including sequels for every Nintendo game that people request. But we are very grateful and appreciate the expectations our fans have for our games, which is a pretty, you know, expected response. They get requests for every game under the sun. They're not going to be able to do 99% of them. However, Takahashi, you know, in the order of Nintendo hierarchy, it's basically Furukawa, then Miyamoto, then Takahashi. Well, Takahashi actually gave a slightly different response that opens the door a smidge and says, we are always considering how to develop new titles and remakes that can be enjoyed by many players. Again, Still sort of a non-answer, but more of a, hey, look, we're really glad that you're asking about these games. You know, we're always considering ways that we could do stuff like that, which is, that's kind of cool. This fan got their moment in the sun. Whether or not they're going to hold on to those shares so they can be at the next meeting, I have no idea. Uh, apparently, they sold shares in another company in order to be able to afford these shares. You know, Nintendo shares are probably going to be dipping in price for a little bit, but you know, if a new hardware gets announced or something else, maybe they're going to shoot back up and the fan could actually profit off of those 100 shares. Nintendo stock is usually a pretty stable stock to hold on to. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see if this fan decides to show up for the next meeting and hopefully get bonus questions in or if they're going to buy even more stock to maybe rise up the chain and get their questions as, you know, regular in every investor's meeting. But uh, it was really, really cool that a fan did that. Pretty crazy. I don't have $43,000 to throw away to do it. Plus, I mean, this person lives in Japan, so I uh, ended up not being like a big travel cost. But for me, I'd also have to travel all the way across the world. But yeah, um, pretty crazy, if I'm honest.
Now, our last story uh, actually just deals with the Nintendo Switch Online. So we talked about this on live stream last night, but I want to bring it up today for those who missed it. Uh, there were four new games added to Nintendo Switch Online right at the end of June. Uh, and they dropped them last night in typical Nintendo fashion. And these are for Sega Genesis. And I got to say, pretty good update. They dropped Comics Zone, Target Earth, Zero Wing, and Mega Man The Wily Wars. And I got to be honest... All four of these games are pretty much bangers. So when it comes to adding games to Nintendo Switch Online, this is probably one of the best you know, collection of four games at a time. They have really added to the service in some time. Uh, there's a lot of really great games on Sega Genesis. It's really unfortunate we don't see the same sort of attention to detail over on the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo 64. Uh, but hey... The good news for a lot of us is a lot of the amazing games that were on the Super Nintendo from third parties are also on Sega Genesis, and we're getting a ton of third-party games for the Genesis app, so eventually we might get some of our favorite Super Nintendo games just in that form, which is fine. The Super Nintendo and Genesis were pretty interchangeable back in the day. There were some quality differences between the games, obviously slightly different control schemes, but for the most part, you know, you get the Lion King on Sega Genesis. It's pretty much the same as the Lion King on the Super Nintendo. So uh, I, I do think that this is a wholly good thing. A great collection. Uh, Mega Man The Wily Wars really takes me back. So uh, Comic Zone is also a game I've never played, uh, but looks really damn good. So I don't know, man. I might actually fire up the app just to play that one. You guys know I don't play a ton of retro games I've already played. So like Mega Man The Wily Wars, it's, I'm glad it's there, but I've also played that. But Comics Zone, I haven't, so I might actually put a little time into that one. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. This was Prime News, uh, and yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day.